how his work. Long. We busted eight guys today. Station's packed. I made dinner. It's in the fridge if you want. Did you uh, do the dishes? Yes. I cleaned up everything after I was done. Good. What uh, time did you get home? At four. You drove? Mm-hmm. I thought your car was in the shop. I got it back this morning. Well, you didn't tell me that. I was going to. Huh. They didn't touch the GPS, did they? No. Why would they? Well, it's expensive. I paid good money for it. They didn't steal anything from the car. So the GPS is still there? Yes. It's in the same spot where you set it up for me. Well, you should be careful from now on. That is the third time your car had to get fixed. We have insurance. That I pay for. I know. It, it'd just be cheaper if I just drove you. You're busy. I don't want to bother you. Well, it bothers me not knowing if you're safe. I am, Arthur. I promise. Right. Do you remember Mr. Blackwood? Who? Uh, my old high school teacher. The one who taught me English. That old son of a bitch? Yeah, I remember him. The guy was off his rocker. <laughs> Trying so hard to get me to like to kill a mockingbird. <sighs> Pretty sure I got myself kicked out and into detention on purpose. Mom and Dad always liked him. They said he was a nice man and- Well, Mom and Dad said a lot of things. Doesn't mean they were right all the time. Anyways, what are you even bringing up Mr. Blackwood for? He passed away a few days ago. Huh. I heard they're holding a viewing of the body tomorrow. <sighs> That's dumb. Just bury the damn guy already. Why drag things out longer? Well, I was thinking that I should go. Why would you do that? His son was in my grade, you know. So? <laughs> well, it's not like you guys were friends or anything, right? No, but I, I just I just think it'd be nice to pay my respects. Mr. Blackwood was always kind to me. Especially after Mom and Dad died. Well, that was a hard time for both of us, Dawn. Well, we had each other. You know, maybe you were too young to see it. Well, Mom and Dad didn't exactly leave us anything to live on in terms of money. But I stepped up. For us, for you. And no high school teacher was there to help me. All the shitty adults thought I wouldn't amount to anything. But I proved them wrong. Besides, Mr. Blackwood never took care of you the way I do, did he? No. Exactly. He means nothing to us. He's not family. I am. Don't do anything unnecessary just to be nice. I'm sorry, I just think- Don't I you have work tomorrow? I could go after. What about all the chores here? The laundry, the vacuuming? I could get it done after the viewing. I don't want you going anywhere strange all alone. It's at a church in a good neighborhood. And I'll probably run into some old classmates, people I know. Please, Arthur. Fine. Do all the chores first, and then you can go. Thank you. Oh, shit. I gotta go to the station. When will you be back? I don't know. Maybe a day or two? I can drive myself to the viewing. Fine. Just be careful, Dawn. Keep your phone on with you. Call me if anything happens. Okay. I'll see you.
Are you sure this is the right place? There's only one church on 53rd Street. How do you know? I Googled it. Then what's taking so long? I don't know, Parker. Maybe Kit's just doing some paperwork. Maybe something's wrong. His dad's already dead. What else could be wrong? Sorry. It's okay. I don't want to take it out on you. I, I get it. You were close with Mr. Blackwood, right? Yeah. It was like having a second dad. How are you holding up? It was all so sudden. I don't get it. He was still pretty young, right? Yeah. And the life of the party, too, when, at least when I knew him. You know, he used to take me and Kit bowling every weekend in the summer when we were kids. And if we bowled a strike, he would buy the whole place ice cream. <laughs> From the great Mr. Blackwood. I didn't see him much after he remarried, though. I wish I could have met him. Yeah. You know, you, you don't have to be here, right? Of course I do. Kit needs us. I'm not going to leave him alone right now. Me neither. He's always been there through, for us, through thick and thin. Exactly. Kit. What are you guys doing here? What do you mean? Where else would we be? We heard. Yeah, I bet you did. We came here as soon as we could. Did she tell you where to find me? What? The shit stain I call my stepmom. Did she tell you to come over here and babysit me? Kit, we're here for you, not for anyone else. What's going on? She's taking the house. What? But it belonged to your dad. Not anymore. You'd be surprised how much debt a high school teacher could have. My stepmom's selling the house and all his stuff to pay it off. But your dad left a will, right? Not even that. As usual, he's completely unprepared for everything. I didn't even get to say goodbye. He couldn't have prepared for death. Right. He was a good man. He loved you. Loved me, huh? Of course. I can't do anything with that. I can't do anything with a dead man's love. Sometimes love isn't enough. Kit, we'll, we'll help you. With anything you need, we're going to be here for you. The whole funeral and everything. The funeral? You want to know what's going on with that? My stepmom wants to have a viewing tomorrow. A viewing? Of his body? A public one, too. Anyone can show up. She's going to let a bunch of people come to the church and scream and cry over his body. It's a total free-for-all. Just step right up and see the dead body of the great Mr. Blackwood. And I'm just supposed to stand there and shake their hands and thank everybody for coming? How long will it last? All day. I'll be stuck here tomorrow playing the gracious host. And then the day after that, we have the funeral. And I say goodbye to my dad forever. I haven't been sleeping much lately. I keep having these dreams. Sometimes I think I see my dad in them. Like he's there, watching me, calling out to me. But before I can say anything, I wake up. And it's just me, alone. It's just a dream. Yeah. I wish it could be real. But it's not. It's better than nothing, right? Clooney. No, I mean that, sorry, I just mean, it's better than the alternative. It's better than never seeing him again. I won't see him again. I can't. Not unless I die and there's a heaven somewhere where he is. I don't think heaven is the only place you could be with someone again. What do you mean? I mean, it sucks, right? That you have to wait until you die to see the people that you've lost? Yeah, nothing's fair, though. Maybe not, but we have our dreams. In our dreams, we could be with someone again. It's a place where fantasy becomes reality. We don't have to wait when we can just close our eyes, fall asleep, and talk to them. We could tell them everything we couldn't say when they were alive. We could ask them questions, know if they're okay wherever they are. In our dreams, anything is possible. The people that we love don't have to be dead. I guess the idea sounded better in my head. No, that's, that's beautiful. But 
It's not real. It's just in our heads. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't have to be. What? Maybe those dreams can be real. I wish they were, but... No, they can be real. They aren't just dreams. What do you mean? Kit? Look, we're friends, right? Yeah. And you want to help me through this. You know we do. And you would do anything I asked you if I told you I needed it? Yes. Then listen. There's a lake, about three hours from here. My dad used to drive there to just get away. It was the place he loved the most in the world. So what? Why are you talking about some lake? Parker, listen. This lake is special. You can talk to people there, people who've passed. Kit, what are you saying? I'm going to take him. I'm going to take my dad there. You're joking, right? No, I'm not. But you are insane! It's real, okay? A place where fantasy becomes reality, just like the dreams you talked about. But those are dreams! You're talking about some lake. How do you even know that it works? Because I've been there. What? When my mom died, we had her ashes in this urn. My dad drove me up to the lake with it, said that we were going to see my mom again. Kit, come on. Just listen. When we got there, we stood in the water and he held the urn. And my dad, he started talking to my mom. He could hear her voice. He was crying so much and saying he loved her. And I saw it all. Kit. My dad told me the water there was connected to spirits. That if you stood in it with the remains of your loved ones, you could talk to them again. So you're going to take his ashes there. That's your plan. Not his ashes. But his body. But you said... My stepmom won't allow a cremation. All I have to do is bring his remains to the lake for it to work. And if that means taking his whole corpse, I'll do it. Okay, kid, this is too much. Look, I'm sorry the house is being sold and all of your dad's things, but this isn't possible. It is. Come with me and you'll see it. What if we get caught? Your stepmom's going to find out. She won't. We could take the body after the viewing tomorrow night and then bring it back by the next morning. All right, it's been a long day. You're tired and you're stressed. I'm not crazy, Parker. I didn't say that. You said we were friends. You said you'd do anything for me. I would, but this is dangerous and you could get arrested. Parker, I don't care. I don't care if I get arrested, okay? I'm going to talk to my dad, even if it means I get locked up forever. But why? He's my dad! Clooney, you said that in our dreams, we could tell the people we've lost everything we couldn't tell them before. And we could ask them what we need to know now. Well, I want a chance to do that with my dad. For real. And I can. At this lake. You're being childish. I know what I'm doing. No, you don't. Don't be a rebel just to prove something. You know what? This is so like you. Always keeping me away you're from what I want. You're risking your future for something you think exists. Just don't talk you're about upset. my future like you know what's best for me. You're not because I know what I need. Going on about a lake connected to spirits? I need to do this. I don't expect you to understand. You know I hadn't seen my dad for months? I was home for Christmas, but I left early. I didn't call after that. Nothing. Then three days ago I found out he's dead. Don't you think I deserve to spend one last night with him? To talk to him? Before I say goodbye forever? I'll go. I'll help you. Clooney? Do you mean it? Go talk to your dad, Kit. Say what you have to say. Don't wait to die to see him again. Thank you. Parker, I won't force you. Is this what you need? Yes. And this lake, you're sure it's real? It's my only chance to be with my dad again. I know it's for real. Then promise me something. The minute this goes bad, we turn around and come back, even if it means we never make it to the lake. I can't lose you, kid. All right. Then I'm in. Really? You're our friend, kid. We have your back. The great Mr. Blackwood is going to take one last road trip if I have anything to do about it. Then let's meet in the church at midnight tomorrow. I'll stay behind after the viewing and leave the door unlocked for you guys. We take the body, drive to the lake, and come back and put it in the casket before sunrise.
I'll drive. Great. Thank you guys. Really. Get some sleep, okay? Sure. I'll see you guys soon. Hey. Sweet dreams.